Hello, welcome to a new sim release. This is 0.46b, where the B is for beta. We've moved from alpha to beta. What's that mean in real terms? It's just I felt that the code was good enough to go from like, uh, this is just chucked together into this is a little bit more well-rounded. And that's kind of the topic for this release. It's just to do a couple of things to sort of make it a little bit more complete as a package and to make it more friendly for those coming in that don't know anything about it. Let's jump in. So what was that? Um, again, the sort of the well-roundedness thing, what I've done, I've just created a small intro sequence to basically like introduce the sim. And instead of dumping you straight into the, the quad and ready to fly, it goes to the main menu. It's just to give a little bit more of a, a helping hand to those that haven't come here before. As for the music, why not? I got an offer from a guy called Aerovision who does composing and he offered to do me a song and we talked about what sort of track would suit and I thought because this is very much sort of just me knocking something together something that felt like the old Amiga demos of old if, if you guys ever had an Amiga or going back further Commodore 64 the demo groups used to release stuff and they had a certain sort of sound to it and I thought he did really well at creating that sort of sound um, he hasn't finished yet, he wants to carry on evolving that sound so we might have some different releases as it comes. However, in both cases these things can be turned off. So if I go to the system config setting, the music in the menus is on by default. We can simply turn it off again here. And if we didn't want the sim to start in the menu and want to go straight to the game, we just tick this one and it will go straight into the game instead. And as far as the opening animation goes, aside from the fact I'm going to introduce more variants as things go on and randomly put things in there because it amused me you don't have to watch it every time just hit a button or hit the mouse button and it'll skip over and go straight to the sim so as far as the sim goes if we go onto the main screen now this has been reset the defaults and there's a couple of things i changed again to aid the first timer um, if we have a look at what rates and throttle multiplier are on you'll notice they're very low i've modeled this towards the beginner rates and the free s power so even if uh, someone picks this up for the first time, it's not going to go crazy with them. Um, previously it was defaulting to the very highest rates and power, which is probably a bit crazy if uh, someone's beginning, they need to, to get back to something beginner. So the base is beginner. Obviously, um, if you're not new to quads, you'll be able to sort that out quickly. And if you are new, you can at least build up from there. Another thing you'll notice from there is that gravity multiplier is set on two. This is the default value now. I went back Oh, I've looked at gravity so many times. I was stuck between the fact that the gravity multiplier needs to be high to feel less floaty on FPV. But as soon as I pushed that up to where it felt it was comfortable and, and used line of sight, it felt way too heavy. It was like the quad was just bashing back down again. So after some internal debate with myself, I decided that, you know what, it's all about how things feel. It's not about trying to fit with the model of the simulation of gravity if it doesn't feel right because what's the point in that so I went back and I looked at this and I said yep yeah, 2.0 feels about good as a starting point now I'd encourage everybody to go back and have a look at this and decide does it feel right to them um, and the way I do this is I'd set my quad up as the sort of the power I'd have it and then what I what I was doing I was doing some sort of quick sort of split s type turns around these gates and deciding if I liked the way it felt because that is a very familiar move to me. And I'd, in, I'd encourage you to do something similar to see if it sort of replicates how you feel. Um, and of course, if you're new to the game, then that 2.0 is gonna be about right. Now, if you're wondering, what about line of sight? Doesn't line of sight feel weird now? Uh, the answer very quickly is no, because what I did, I decided that I'd fixed the gravity rate at the simulation of, of like one, basically, um, and it would ignore what you're doing in FPV, and that way both your FPV would feel right and the gravity would feel right. So if we were to um, put in angle mode, use a line of sight mode now, it, it still feels pretty good to me. Now, one of the things that's been on the list for ages, and I know a bunch of you guys have been asking for it, is to be able to use your radio switches to do stuff. 
So we finally added something in there. So if I go to the main menu and the radio setup, what we've got is I've been able to allocate the flip and the reset uh, switches. What you need to do is remap your controls and it will ask you for some switch positions. Now to make sure your switch positions are working, if you look in the radio debug screen, you'll see mine already set up, but just make sure that when you move your switches, like this is uh, channel seven and channel eight here, that you've got movement on the axis. They work on the axis, they don't work on the buttons. So as long as you've got your switch already happening like that and appearing here, it'd be fine. If for any reason you've definitely got it set up on a channel, it's not moving there, then go into the calibration and when you calibrate, move the sticks and also move your switches. I've increased the calibration time so you've got plenty of time to do that. But if we go to uh, remap controls now, basically when it says move pitch, roll, throttle, your, then we've got reset, flip. And uh, so from there, if we were to go on and I'm just flying along and I hit reset, it resets. And similarly, if I'm flying along here and I decide to crash down here and I hit flip, then it will flip back. This probably works better with um, a momentary switch. For example, I could, I could leave uh, flip like that and every time I sort of flipped over, it would just automatically ping back again. So that's, that's something you can do. So anyway, that's in there. I'm um, not sure if that's going to stay exactly as is. I'd, I'd probably want some feedback from you guys about how it's working with your radios and are there any other functions you're desperate to have on uh, switches as well. Next thing I did was take a look at the city. If we look at the city now, you probably won't notice much of a difference. But basically, some of the people mentioned that they thought the buildings and the quad wasn't scaling correctly. So what I did is I constructed in the game um, four virtual one meter blocks and put them against buildings to try and work out how big their stories were. And in a commercial building, floor to floor should be about three meters or nine or 10-ish feet. And some of these were coming up a little bit short, so I basically expanded these. Um, I wasn't a complete slave to it though, although I wanted everything to be the right size. I also took a little bit of artistic liberty, so all the buildings weren't the same size, there were some changes. And it also creates one decent gap. So most of these buildings have been slightly expanded what we've got between these two buildings is quite a tight gap now. It's probably not that tight, but it feels it when you fly through it. So yeah, all those buildings are slight different sizes. I had to readjust some of the plane uh, waypoints actually because they were uh, hitting <laughs> one of the buildings, now it grew. The other thing I did, I had my ground crew out and I said, it's time to dig this desert up a bit and make it flatter because the road used to be all over the place. You can see now where we've excavated some of the sand uh, and what we've got now is a nice flat road. Uh, aside from the fact it looks a bit better, it also doesn't have these glitches and little texture overlaps I was getting which was catching people's eyes and just putting them off a little bit. So it should all be quite nice now and uh, much easier to look at essentially. So all those bits I'd put down to essentially accessibility. Um, so I did want to put in one sort of new decent thing for you guys. Uh, one of the most popular requests I was getting is about getting buildings in there. Some sort of bando, maybe a construction site, something like that. So my story is the newly installed wind farm has brought prosperity to this region and there's now a building going on. So this is the start um, of our building. What I had was pieces modelled by uh, Nathan who, who did the, the towers and the plane. He built me up a little construction kit out of pieces and then what I did to that is I added the colliders which would tell a quad when it was hitting it. Um, then I saved these out in Unity, this is called a prefab, and then I built my building out of prefabs. And what it meant is I didn't have to then go into a very complicated 3D model to try and add these to it later, they were all just in there. There's an awful lot of pieces to put together but I, I do think it's worth it. So what we have to show for that is this building. The idea is this is a incomplete office building which is under construction. Uh, again, my ground crew have been out getting rid of the grass and making it flat. And we've basically got a five story building here which is incomplete. For example, the, um, the front hasn't been done here. The wall dividers haven't been done. There are staircases you can go up. And this center section has been left for the uh, construction workers to, to help ferry some of the stuff up through the up through the walls there. 
I have to say, it is quite a challenge to fly through. Again, this is set to a uh, three meter height, which is a, a normal commercial building. It does feel pretty tight. So uh, interested in, in what you guys make of it and to hear your feedback um, and how it looks and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's, that's there uh, for you to play with now. Uh, hopefully we'll be having some more construction things coming soon. The only other thing in game we did is I added a credit page because I wanted to acknowledge the people that were giving me some help. So if you view the credits now, you'll find out where you can get rid of Nathan, Akka, drones and whatnot, and uh, AeroVision. Uh, he's got his page there to his band camp where he's released this as a single, so you can check it out there. I quite like his, uh, his album cover page as well. So that is the update as it stands for now. Um, next thing, I want to jump ahead and skip over a couple of things because we're all stuck at home, we're, most of us are locked down, so I thought what's better to do than maybe look at the networking issue, maybe see if we can get people playing together. I think that might be quite good fun. And of course, in the meantime, Nathan's hopefully coming up with some more construction pieces, so I'll be able to add those in. We're definitely looking at the very least a crane, and we're still trying to find out the best place to put a bridge. Because again, lots of people have been wanting to do sort of rolls and uh, inverted things under bridges or spans or something like that so i need to put one in but if i just put it smack it in the hill so it just looks a bit odd on itself it needs to sort of fit in with the rest of it so that's hopefully something coming up soon the other thing i also want to talk about is the possibility of a steam version there's a couple of reasons for this one of which is every time i do a video like this and i say things like all the links are down below the wiki page is in the description down below the download page is down below um, i get a bunch of emails and comments saying is this available on windows where do I download it? I don't understand how to start it. What's going on? It strikes me that um, some people don't read the pages. So I thought if I do a Steam thing, they can just download it on Steam once and then it'll update on its own. The only problem with Steam is it costs $100 to get any product on Steam. So my thought are I, I would probably do like a $2 nominal fee to buy it on Steam. You can think of that as a tax on people that can't read the description, or you can think of it as more of a passive donation. If I did that, it doesn't mean that the, the sim is suddenly chargeable. It means that there's the free version, which is always on GitHub, and there's the exact same thing that happens to be on Steam. But it's just a thought. Feel free to give me your comments and stuff down below as normal. But for now, that's the video. As, as, as I've mentioned many times, <laughs> the links to the downloads are down below the email address if you've got problems, the wiki page which has been updated for this thing, all in the description. You just have to expand it and you're good to go. Uh, one thing I would encourage is uh, please get back to me if this version changes anything that was previously okay in the other version. Um, as I said, I, I've always targeted this as quite low-end devices. So if I've added something in which has changed it for you, then I need to know. So at least if something's gone in new and it's slowing things down, I, I know that I can put options in to toggle them on and off or change some of the settings that way. But there you go, download, enjoy and have fun with that and I'll be back with some more updates. In the meantime, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, if you didn't give it a thumbs down. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below and if you can find it, click on the little bell icon and tell you when I'm uploading videos. Stay safe out there, keep washing your hands and I will see you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.